caught up in these like got, got a minute. minute conversations and a got a minute conversation will last 30 minutes. Easy. Yep. The struggle that Kobe and I have or Kobe has with me is I'm the guy that's like, let's break it all down, <laughs> burn yeah. it to the ground and rebuild it. Where Kobe wants to just like, hey, maybe we don't need to totally build, break it down. Like, let's just make these small okay. pivots. Like mod remodel a little bit. Yeah, like, like remodel not, where I'm like, bulldoze. nope, <laughs> let's bulldoze it and let's start over. I remember like, when what? he showed up in my office. Yeah, Kobe, because you were even like, what is, what's this all about? Why are you, this, Why wasn't, you this wasn't on the vision board or whatever. Kobe Sway here with Adam Briley, like always. And uh, today we're going to talk about real talk, all the struggles, and we're just going to jump into some topics and kind of just see how the uh, conversation goes. We have a lot going on. We have, uh, as always, we have uh, rates that impact the real estate market. We have the ongoing NAR lawsuit. We have struggles with our team the size and uh, managing personalities and coming up with a cohesive group of bunch working together. And then we have all of our businesses. We got, you know, insurance and mortgage and title. And so we have a lot going on. Yeah. Um, what do you think we should talk about? I think so. The, I think the biggest thing that happened, right. So let's talk about what we're doing internally as a team. So probably what, where we went the last 90 days or maybe a little longer is we were spending a lot of time on the lower producers energy effort, right. To try to get them to a higher level. Sure. And at the end of the day, like we can only do so much and it's, you know, we want to see people win. We want to see them succeed because they all have their different whys of why they do this. And a lot of times it has to do with their family providing, you know, providing a nice, uh, you know, lifestyle, paying off certain debts, whatever. And then, you know, of course there's always like, we want to, you know, everyone has like the HGTV reasons uh, like yeah. why we want to help. But like at the end of the day, there's normally like a financial reason behind it. Totally. Like that is the reality of it. And I think that's probably the best motivation if you're being real to go out there and actually produce and provide a good service for your clients because then you get referrals. Right. Yep. So we were really spending a lot of time. So our balance has always been, okay, we have our top producers that we don't want to really like micromanage them, right? Yep. We try to leave them alone. But then if you if you leave them alone too much, then you have a potential retention issue yep. where they're like, well, do you even care about us? Like, why are you spending all this time with maybe the lower producers? Like, what about me? Like, why don't yep. you celebrate our successes? And that, you know, we, we probably, we have gotten ourselves into a little bit of like, okay, the writing was on the wall through like chatter. Like we always hear things, right. Sure. And then we do our check-ins with people. And so, well, yeah, like w what about us? So you can give them a nice, nice slap on the back, like, Hey, good yep. job. But at the same time, like there, yeah, there is more that you need to do. So we're kind of like going through a weird phase with that right now. So we kind of, I mean, we basically made an announcement on the t at the team, like, hey, like, it's on you to go out there and produce. Like, we're only, we're going to be able to hold you accountable to the things that you say you want to do. Yep, of course. And we, we have, like, a general baseline of, hey, this is the basic stuff that you should be doing. Like, as simple as, like, you should all, no matter where, really where you're at in your business, you should do a minimum of an hour of outbound prospecting a day. Any business owner. Yeah. And, and that's like bare minimum. And, and most people don't do that because when, when I talk to, and I've been getting lots of calls from other agents in the, not on our team, not even at our brokerage, like, Adam, how are you doing? What's going on? Like, what are you seeing? That sort of stuff. Because with the NAR stuff, I mean, then you had the, we had these horrible wind storms that came yeah. and created a lot of issues. And then you had the stock market do what it's doing. And we and, had a tornado here not that long ago. Yeah. Had a tornado. Yeah. Uh, flooding. You know, a lot of, a lot of agents are starting to like, you can almost see it like they're starting to stress out for sure. Yep. And more than they were now, there's always, there's, there's always certain agents that will just do good no matter what. So I, I'm just talking about the masses here. And, you know, then you always ask them like, okay, well, what is your like day look like? What does your week look like? And it's always amazing to me where there's like really little time of outbound prospecting. Like yep. no door knocking, no touches, no 
check-ins with clients or, or prospect. No emails, no social media, no text, no, like not even volunteering at maybe even a local church to network. Yeah, it's there, there's nothing. And, and so it's like, again, I, I always joke, like I think people got so used to the COVID d- days. Oh, yeah. It, um, and it, it just like, it's like, guys, it's, it's not that way. No. Right. Like you, you have to, and that's a big shift to go from pretty, I mean, you're pretty phone, easy street. Yeah. Like for, for a few years, it was like that too. Oh my gosh. Now this is a huge shift. I have to now start putting in some major work. And so like, that's where I, I'm seeing happen. So for us, like we're telling, like our message to them is like, guys, you have to do the basics. And this goes for our vet agents because some of our vets that had done awesome the last five, six years, they had lifestyle changes or, you know, life happened to them, whatever. But we still have to remind them like our, our greatest form of love, which is a Shep Black organization comment is our greatest form of love is us just holding you guys accountable yep. to the things that you guys say you want to do. And so... We probably will be, in my mind, like I know I'm going to be more intentional with the top producers, um, also helping out the, the, and I'm not talking the brand new people that start. I'm talking to people who have been on the team for a while and they're still not really making things happen. Yep. We're, you know, we're, we're kind of like, we almost have to hold their feet to the fire a little bit and say, hey, you, you got to do this. You have to, you have to make this because not only does it, it's a poor representation of us. What do you think the other top producers think if we're holding someone around? And this goes for multiple teams too. Like what what do, what do top performers think on a team if the team is just holding on to the low producers that aren't doing anything? Not like striking out, like legit not even showing up, putting in the work. Yeah. And then it starts, you know, it, it causes issues there. So. Well, the, I, I know we're going through a shift on yeah. that for sure. Well, it's just a matter of just, I mean, I think at the end of the day, It doesn't matter what level the real estate agent is. If they're brand new or they've been doing it for 10 years, 15 years, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the real estate agent will fall off into a path at some point, right? Life will come up. Maybe maybe it's a baby or a a work trip or something happened with their significant other or they have kids going into school now. And what happens is they get into dark corners for a period of time. And you know that these agents will disappear for a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month. And next thing you know, you have a veteran real estate agent that's been doing it a long time. And if you're not staying on top of them and like Adam's talking about micromanaging, it's really checking in with your people on another level. It's not just, Hey, how are you doing? Well, I'm good. Oh, well, keep up the good work. Right? Like if you peel the onion back a little bit lower, sometimes what you find is, you know, actually I've been really struggling for like a month. I'm so glad you called today and checked in with me. Like I had a conversation with an agent, you know, just recently and they said the same thing. They're like, I mean, I did really well up until May and I haven't done anything since May and I'm surprised you haven't called and asked me to do something. And it's like, well, this is an agent that's been with me for four years, you know, like my door's always open, but in their eyes, they feel like we're preoccupied with something else and they don't want to be a bother or something. Yeah. You know, so again, these people go into a dark path or unproduction or things come up and if we're not there to check in with them, then that's when they come to you and say, well, why haven't you been checking in with me? I wish you'd kick my butt like you kicked these other people's butts. And that's when it goes to, again, it doesn't matter if it's a veteran or an established agent or a new agent, every person wants to feel like they're important, they matter, and they can rely on us when they need us. They just, people aren't going to come out and say, hey, I have a new addiction I don't want to talk about, right? Like, yeah, no one, no, no one, one, does no one ever admits, like I even think about team meeting, like, okay, raise your hand if you're doing this or struggling with that or whatever. No one ever participates. No, because they don't want to be called out. They're embarrassed. Yeah, and I, it it drives me nuts at times. I will say that. I'm not going to hide that. But, like, I I do wish everyone would just be open. I'm probably too much of an open book, and um, I word vomit at times. But, um, okay, so on that, like, I, I think the thing, too, that we have to make sure that everyone knows is, like, it's like that meme that's going around from the Olympics, and I don't know where the guy was from, but he's the shooter. Oh, Ukraine. And he was the Ukraine guy, and yeah. he was just there holding his gun, no special, like, literally holding it no with No glasses, one, no like, cover. He was wearing his normal eyeglasses, <laughs> just holding it one hand, shooting, and I have no idea how well he did or anything, but, yeah. like, that's the reality of it where— he just, he just did it. 
in no special pose, no special equipment. He just was holding the gun one handed like that where other there people were like, yeah, that guy. <laughs> now, like, you know, people were holding it all these special ways. It's and, Turkey. I apologize. Oh, it's, it's Turkey. Turkey. I apologize. Okay. Um, and you know, it goes back to who, like, there's no secret sauce. There's no, no there's nothing you're going to go perfect before you go do it. Just start yep. doing it. Like start making the force of honor calls, start making the expired calls. I'm using those because those are like horrible things to have to do. Right. But like, you know, uncomfortable things you're yeah. nervous about. Yeah. But like start making, like start calling out of the pond leads. Like, cause like, look at the success that our agents have when they actually yeah. do it, they get people out of it or they go work to Google leads. No one wants to go work the Google leads because they're like, it's not like a Zillow lead. You got to work it. You got to yeah. contact you gotta it, sift it 12, 20 times in order to potentially convert it. Where a Zillow lead, you talk to them once or twice and you got to sell yeah. generally. But they make 20% more, but heaven forbid. <laughs> yeah. And so it's just like, it's just getting people to just go do it. And then yeah. you first got to get them past the first 30 days of staying yeah. consistent doing it. Because habits the, aren't built instantly. Yeah. And then the, really it's, you got to do it 90 days yep. before you start seeing something on average. Sure. Now, every once in a while, people are longer, and then some people are shorter. But first, get through the first 30 days, not saying you're going to get anything, and then your next hurdles get another 60 days on top of it. Build the habit, and then let the habit develop into something that'll pay for itself. And that's that's not easy today, honestly, because we want instant, 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 instant. It's like I go back to an agent that's been with us for over three years, and they're like, yeah, I did two open houses. They're no good. And they say that all the time. They know it gets under my skin. <laughs> well, I just talked to someone too on an open, like, Hey, do you have any suggestions for me on like how to get their info? And, um, you know, on that, it's like, I've always taken the approach and I haven't done an open house in years, but like, it's like when you do it, you're just, if you are being real and you are connecting with them, you're building rapport with them and you are truly showing value. Like, you know, the data of the neighborhood of the other homes that are yep. potentially available you know, and you're not being like the salesy type where, you know, normally you can just say, Hey, you know, do you mind if I follow up with you? Like, I would love to be able to reach out to you, uh, you know, no pressure, but would love to get your, uh, phone number. I'll text you real quick, my cell phone number, yep. and then you have it. And generally that works for me like every single time. Um, and there's a hack to it. If so, if you guys want the hack, I'll give it to you quick. You're, you're standing there and you say, Hey, the homeowner requires everybody that enters their information. Is your phone number 402 or 531? And by doing that uh, psychology with somebody, by saying the number, people will correct you and say, oh, actually, mine's 701 because I'm from North Dakota. My number is 701. Instead of lying, I give you my correct number. Yeah. So by saying 402 or 531, and then an email, same thing. Is yours Gmail or Yahoo? People always correct you. And we say that all the time at team meeting is like, we use fellows, a really good system. And people will call and be like, my home is worth way more than that. And you're like, so glad you called. Yeah. So like we'd rather kind of do that hack, if you will. So that's a great check-in hack, just so you all know. Um, it works really well. Yeah. And I don't even like using the whole, I wouldn't even necessarily suggest you got to say, hey, the seller requires it, even though some like that. Sure. Because they want to know how many people did really came through my yep. house. But, um, you know, not, you know, because I, you know, sometimes that might come across as like a sales tactic too. Totally. And it could be. But like, I, easy hack. but your, your whole like, Five three one versus four zero two Gmail Yahoo like that's a good yeah it's just good, a way to get them good, to good tactic yeah because also at the end of the day you will provide value to them like I had a guy who I was showing a client a house and he just happened to show up and he goes hey do you mind if I look at it I asked my clients are you guys cool yeah we're sure go for it and so I just I did the text message thing and he's like yeah yeah here you go and um, I actually listed another property that is a good fit for him. So he's like, I'm definitely interested in taking a look at that, you know, but if I didn't have that information, I wouldn't have been able to give him first heads up of totally. that property. So, you know, there's definitely a value there. Um, so knowing some of the knowledge in the community before you hold an open house, even if you could spout off, Hey, a couple houses sold down the street, we might have a couple coming up. I'll just shoot you a text. No pressure. I have a feeling most people don't really ask. They, they say they ask, but they're not. They're like, it's like a, th they might ask and get quickly shut down and then you keep going, building rapport with them. And then you ask again, totally. Most people are probably asking a second or yeah. third time. Um, oh. you know, they're, if they get rejected, they just shut down yeah. right away. So the, the other thing too, on just doing stuff. The other thing I noticed we're struggling with is like, let's talk about Janelle, for example, Janelle kind of got like, and I'm, we're working on Janelle, our sales coach, our sales coach. 
And so Janelle would get caught up in these like got, got a minute. minute conversations and a got a minute conversation will last 30 minutes easy. Yep. And we yeah. have 40, 50 people. Yeah. So it, it becomes like versus her truly being their accountability coach and holding them their feet to the fire to have them go out and do the things they are supposed to do to be successful for their family or for themselves. It got into just like life talk. I don't want to say drama. Almost well, like, like a therapy. Yeah. Like a therapy session. Sometimes hey, it, and that that's good from time to time, but it's like, that eats up a lot of time totally. and that takes away from the other people that do deserve that time too. Excellent. So really tried to like get straight to the point, not overcomplicate it, keep that conversation a few minutes and, and, and that's it. Like, this is it. Like, this is what well, you do. And I think the other thing like you're hitting on is like, again, running a team or a business, it ebbs and flows. It's like your family. So like sometimes work-life balance, sometimes you'll be at work a lot. You won't see your family as much. So then you got to throw your time back into your family and then work suffers a little bit. It's the same with vets, new agents, right? We've got to, th- we got to throw our, some time back onto the vets. And again, we got to be mindful of that conversation. Same with Janelle, our sales coach. It's like, she got, we told her, we want you to become really close to these people, be their confidant, answer their questions, like know them on a deep level. And We've got to pivot back a little bit to quicker conversations about some of those things and more on like, okay, I know that you called about this, but really quickly, uh, what was your prospecting time? I know, you, I know you talked about having two hours a day. Did you get that done? Oh, no. Okay, so like maybe this drama you're talking about with this other realtor, like really should we be talking about that right now? Like, yeah. So it's just, again, it's like anything else. You're not like pivoting or, or starting over or a failure. The business flows just like we're talking about today is rates are going to change. Rates are going to go up. They're going to go down. And like the COVID talk you were just talking about is we've been talking about getting back to the basics for two or three years. So it's just like, it's putting your attention and energy into certain topics because you have certain things that are required at that time with realtors. Yeah. Now on your uh, pivoting or that, like the other challenge too, to be transparent with everyone is the, the struggle that Kobe and I have or Kobe has with me is I'm the guy that's like, let's break it all down, (laughs) burn it to the ground and rebuild it where Kobe wants to just like, Hey, maybe we don't need to totally build, break it down. Like, let's just make these small pivots. Like remodel a little bit. Yeah. Like like, remodel where I'm like, no, let's bulldoze it and let's start over. Like, and that's okay with me. Like I have this like absolute no fear. And if it has to all get broken down, and just get demolished, we will rebuild it. But, um, well, and think about not to stop you on that, but think about like Lincoln. Yeah. Like, let's just be honest on that. It was like, let's not, let's not participate there. Let's get out of that. I market. wanted to get out of Lincoln. And I was like, he- I was like, please no, like give me more time. And luckily, and again, I'm not saying we won this because I still feel like I compromised a lot because I wanted to keep some things, but we have changed our dynamics, our thinking. And now our Lincoln team actually performs at a high level. Like, Zillow's been bothering me to add more and more to Lincoln. And I'm like, hey, what about Omaha? But it- Well, think of our one killer Lincoln agent. Yes. Like she, Edith, her name is Edith, and she is a workhorse. And the thing I appreciate about Edith is she doesn't seem to really overcomplicate anything. She keeps it simple. Yeah, and she she just puts her head down, she puts in the work, and she doesn't overcomplicate. She's there to help people buy and sell homes. Yeah. She doesn't like, and and she's a really good connector. Yes. Um, Yep. Like she sent me a picture of selfie. She's like shopping, um, like clothes shopping or doing something like that. And she sent me a picture. She was talking about real estate out publicly. Oh, yeah. And she sent me a picture like, oh my gosh, look, I think it was like a salesperson there. Yeah. Says, hey, I'm actually going to be buying a house. And she, they connected. She got her information. She gave her a card. And now I'm pretty sure she's going to be out showing her houses too. It's just talking to people. Yeah. It's an, it's a relationship game, but Edith is a prime example of like, again, Edith wants some attention. She yeah. wants some love, right? Like we've got to do a great job as a, as a team to make sure we recognize like she's really taken that team and put it on its back. I mean, and literally carried us across the finish line. We're talking like she did more sales in 60 days than we did in a year. For Lincoln. For Lincoln. Yeah. Like think of that. Um, she did over 35 sales in less than a year. She had her license 
in the fall time. It was like October, if I remember right. Um, she joined her team in November. So she might have got in September. And she started when the market had already slowed down. This was last year. Yeah. So the market already slowed yeah. down. So from this was COVID. 2023, yeah. right? So 2024, and uh, it it she just keeps it simple. And actually, when I ask her, what do you do really well with internet leads? And she, she literally says this. She's like, are you stupid? It's easy. <laughs> and she'll say it just like that. She's like, it's easy. We complicate this job. It's talking to people and telling them, how can I help you get into a, a property? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, for the most part, it's that easy. Well, and sometimes as an agent too, like we have to make sure we're guiding our clients. Like I have a client right now where I'm like, if I don't push them to buy, I think they're going to really regret not buying. Cause I have a lot of clients like that, that have looked for like three, four, five years, like off and on very casually. And I was just one this with one this weekend and she was like, I really wish I bought that one house. She'd said it. And like it was like three years ago. I I really do, and you told us to buy it, and we didn't. And you know, we still think about that and regret it. And oh dang! Like, you know, made me think too. Like, okay, I, I probably should be like, are you? Because you're never gonna find a house that fits hundred percent of what you're looking for. So it's like, you know, Edith it, to that point is like she's just she's guiding them like to to, to make these decisions and not because you can get in this rabbit hole of like just not doing anything. Well, but think about because this. Because then the client overthinks it. That's what I'm saying. And then what happens is, again, a lot of our agents um, will rely on a conversation with a first-time client they've never met before, say from the internet, and uh, they will rely on the client to steer the direction of the conversation, right? Like, because they want to make them happy. And then they might be showing them 25 houses. And it's like, at some point, you need to shift the conversation to, okay, well, you told me you want this school district. You told me you want this. You told me you want this. Well, just so you know, it doesn't exist. I can't find you a four hundred ninety-two thousand dollars house. You need a seven hundred sixty thousand dollars. Like for it's your having cri- yeah, for, for your their, criteria, yeah. right? Like, so a real estate's job is to show what's going on. The market is shown that what you're looking for is say X price, and you're looking for Y, and I can't get that. And the market's not going to slow and deliver it to you. And you don't want to pressure the client, but it's almost like you want to control the narrative of like, okay, well, there's four houses that have sold in this area that you're looking for and they've all sold over your budget. So do we have to talk about compromising or do we have to talk about a different budget? Yeah. So so we got that. We have, um, so yeah, we're kind of shifting our attention to go, um, we're going to be going deeper, back to going deeper with holding them accountable, showing probably a little bit more love to our veteran folks because we last quarter we kind of went away from that so shame on us yep um and the five whys yes going deeper with their whys like give us give us why are you doing this so you know i i know i have emails and text messages from agents of like hey you do too yeah like hey this is why i'm doing this so then we can go back and helps us remind them of why they're doing this so that's yep. important um it's it's not easy when you're making cold calls and they're yelling at you and then you're like, why am I doing this? And it's just reminding them like, hey, you said you wanted to go to Disney World this year or you wanted to pay for this trip or it's never money. It's what you do with money. Yeah. So the deeper we go on that, the more successful we are. Yeah. It's it's like a lot of times it's, yeah, it's like a trip or, you know, some more family time or a lot of it's paying off debt too. Yeah. Un, un, when you, you know, first start. Dirty debt or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, you know, other things too that hits my mind is we got the NAR stuff. We just hired an acquisitions manager. So that stirred up some conflict on the team too. And then we have- um, An analyst. Uh, we just hired an analyst, which I'm really excited for that. And uh, the other thing too, just on a real estate agent's level too, is like time on markets increased, right? Over the, oh, yeah. over the year. And it just keeps going bigger, deeper, longer, especially depending on what the price point you're in. But like, I'm noticing a lot of price reductions. Yes. A lot of uh, new construction is sitting there. A lot of new, a lot of builders are reducing too. So I find that interesting. So it's just making sure we are communicating to our clients. This is where the market is. So just um, we got to keep pushing it out there and and effectively communicating to them and giving them an update of what's going on and not rolling over and saying, "Oh, it is all our first week. It's yep. done." And right? panicking because how many agents are like. Hey, I, I'm nervous. It hasn't sold. It has been four days. <laughs> well, I have a lot of vet agents in the industry yeah. that have reached out to me over the last few weeks yeah. on that topic. And exactly. I'm like, guys, like, come on. You've been doing this for 20 years. I've been there for 18. Like, we know better. I know. Like, come but on. We like, forget. Come on, we got this. We forget. Well, and it's our job to communicate that to yeah. our clients. Okay, no, the NAR stuff. So 
I don't know what what do we have on the NAR stuff? Like, I think the only thing I've had a number of clients sign that. Um, now these are all my people that I've known for a long time. I had one push back like, oh man, I'm on the hook potentially for that 2.4 percent. Sure, but um, it, you know, no one in our area as of right now has said they're not going to do a, a buyer's agent payout. No, nope. we haven't been seeing that as a problem. Ever. Now, I'm sure there's some that are like, we're going to run into that. Sure. It's still less than, I was talking to uh, Scott the other day. I think it's still between 1% to 3% variance. Okay. And so the other thing that I, I think the biggest struggle that we're going to have is um, that it's the the Zillow, the, the new people that you just meet sure. offline. Those are going to be the ones that are probably going to be less apt to, well, to sign we'll right think away. About, yeah, well, think about if it. If they're it, brand new looking. Exactly. Think about it. Even if they weren't looking, even if they looked last summer, I mean, honestly, it, it, it's just a different conversation. It's like, okay, well, I looked last summer and I didn't need to do this. Okay? So why do I, yeah. So why do I need to do it? Okay, why am I going to commit to paying you when I haven't even met you yet? Yeah. So you're telling me I have to, I have to sign something, but I don't even know if I want to buy this house. So it's just, there's a lot of confusion there. But really what it is, is Nebraska and Iowa have made a law change and nationwide, a lot of states have made the law changes, obviously they need to. And so in Nebraska, as of July 29th, it's required before entering a house and a real estate agent is with you, you need to have a signed document saying you know they're a real estate agent and what their potential fees are going to be. And then also you need to make sure that you have a broker uh, agency disclosure as far as like what the brokerage is like. Yeah, so there's two documents you got to so sign. So there's two documents and some states have moved it down to one. But there are two things required legally now before entering a house. So it is throwing people off and it's a whole new talk track. So we have a lot of agents that are role-playing and practicing and they're like, oh yeah, it's been going great. And then they get kicked in the teeth and they're like, well, I had three people in a row that said they didn't want to sign this. So now the world's ending. It's like, no, 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 no. Like think about, okay, some clients will sign. Some clients also work with other realtors and the realtor says, oh, just go on Zillow. Like I'm out of town. Let some other agent do it. Yeah. Right. Well, like Alec, he, what, he has a buyer that he was going to show and then they decide, oh no, we don't want to go look. You know, so that like his comment, he didn't have a negative uh, vibe to it. He was just like, well, you know, it's, it is eliminating the tire kickers. Too. Exactly. Because, you know, now the other struggle is going to be, well, if you don't get them to eventually sign, so you need to get in front of them. So I, I think you a can't good, give up too easily. Yeah. Don't give up too easy. I think a good practice is going to be get in front of them, maybe not even at the house, get in front of them. So they get to know you videos. I think a good we talked about a zoom or an in-person coffee. Yeah, Something like simple. that. You got to do that. So then they you're dating them a little bit, you yep. know, and then um, and and then when they realize like because you can show them this is the new MLS rule. It's yes. a little screenshot I have. I text it to them. Yep, oh, we've okay. been sending well, that's, it out. That's a real thing. And then um, because now eventually an agent, a uh, agent will get them to sign that. Absolutely, someone then, will. Yeah. Um, now the other thing too, I always think like what agents are going to be working in the gray and not having their clients sign this, which, you You're know, just are, saying like, hey, oh, it's okay, Adam. Like, you don't need to sign. Yeah, you we'll, ba we'll backdate it, stuff we'll like that. It'll be fine. Yeah, and like we're, I, you know, I told, you know, we told our folks like there is absolutely no way no in way hell we're doing that. you are going down that path of of playing that line. Like, no Because we know way. someone's going to check Berkshire and Briley. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're, we always have the a target on our back. Check. We're too big. Berkshire so and Briley. We always get looked at. <laughs> Uh, when you sell, you know, 900 to 1,000 homes, you're definitely going to be watched. Yeah, totally. So, and it's just, again, it's just, it's new, but it is going to eliminate some of the tire kickers. And then, like you said, my pivot is always to, let's say someone is at more analytical and they're like, I don't see it. Well, why don't we hop on a Zoom, Adam? Instead of, let's do that. Before we, let's bump this. Let's say you want to look at a house today. It's 2.30 right now. Let's say you want to look at a house at 4.30. Let's do this. I'm going to bump it to 6.30. And why don't we hop on a Zoom in 30 minutes? Yeah. Right. Like yeah. it's just it's just changing the narrative. And uh, over the weekend, I had about four agents call and say they had about 30 minute conversations over the phone. So it wasn't Zoom. And they went from instant no's where they signed and they were looking at houses. Now, it took 30 minutes. They probably could have been a little shorter. They didn't know, but they all got them to sign. Yeah, because they all great. understood. We just had to send them the laws and the rules instead of just like, oh, you want to sign this? Yeah. Which so is, again, not rolling over. And, and this is going to yeah. be something that we talk about on our team meetings a lot. Oh, totally. Like, Hey, give us some wins, give us some losses here. Yep. Let's talk about those, break that down. And, um, like Michael, for example, our team, he had a good win that he talked about and he kind of went through his process because yeah, he, he had to work for it yeah. to get her, get them to sign. But like, um, 
you know, making sure he explained everything too. So, you know, that will be a big topic for us. It will be interesting to see what happens over the next six months on this NAR stuff and how will it affect the commissions? Because other parts of the country, they've actually raised the commission for yeah. buyer's agent. I don't know if I would love to say that happens, but I don't. I don't. Some of our team, just so you know, last week, Adam, we had three agents on our team get over the standard. Yeah. yeah traditional, I mean, I'm saying, like, that, I don't want to say that in a bad way, but like traditionally speaking, Omaha's 2 4. Yeah. We had three transactions get 3%. Yeah. I mean, that's great. And, and if a buyer sees the value in them working for them, then, then why not? Like, and that's why it is important to make sure you are not letting them control the narrative. Yep. We are guiding them in the, in the, an effective way. But that's why for us as a team, it is important that we're always talking about these issues at team meetings and, and going over that. And, you know, obviously we use Slack a lot too. So it's just, so, it's, it's pivoting or uh, pivoting or putting spotlights or attention on all these topics. And then we have, um, potentially maybe a rate cut with rates. And yeah. So that's happening. Um, uh, they're having a preliminary meeting. How, yep. what did Tomorrow, they're having there? some Tomorrow. initial so, discussions. We'll see kind of like what, how the market is performing. And then based on that, they're going to make we'll, a decision. We'll normally. see what they do in September. Yes. Yeah. Because yep. the rates did, when the stock market went down, yep. the rates went down too. Yep. Uh -huh. So I had someone locking in at 5.9 on a 30-year. That's I, a I mean, great that rate. that was like, holy cow, that's incredible. Um, We're I starting to see fives again, which is yeah. amazing. That's a fantastic rate. I am hopeful that rates will be down in the low fives, I mean, within the next year. Totally. Well, and we have an election this year too, right? And that yeah. also impacts buyer awareness, client searching, uncertainty, right? You got rates, you got political. I, I will say though, I personally have had more people reach out wanting to do something than I've had in a long time. Um, is that good or bad? I mean, it's good for me, <laughs> but um, that also means like that might, that's a sign of that many more people wanting to list their house oh, too. Right. So it affects your inventory. Cause if I'm having, I'm imagining other agents are having those conversations as well. And we do need a little more inventory. That's for sure, right? Yeah. Like we did an inventory now. It might not sell immediately. You just, what's interesting is um, you have, and the seasonality changes too in Omaha, right? And that's not just Omaha, but the, the Midwest sometimes is impacted a little bit more in the winter and the spring and the summer, and then people want to get to the right school district, right? So there's some seasonality there. There's NAR lawsuits, there's rates, there's team dynamics. And again, we have, we have, we've had agents and I'll say Edith again, we've had agents join and then suddenly sell like 20 houses. And people are like, what is she doing? Like, how is she doing so well? And it kind of reminds this happened when she joined, some of the vets were looking around like, who is this person? And why is she kicking so much tail right now? Like yeah. she's third on our leaderboard. Think yeah, of that. I know. She's third know. on our leaderboard. Um, so it's just, it's ever evolving as far as like where our attention goes and the team is going to dictate where the attention goes because- Right now, they need help with the buyer conversation. Yeah. I, I think for us, how we've always operated is like, listen, as long as we are ethically and morally sound for our client, that's always the baseline, right? Yeah. But uh, we are always, I mean, we're, we're a pivoter type team. Like we will try new things to see what works better. And that goes with like, I mean, look at us. Like we signed up to do a mortgage company. Yeah. We had no business doing that. We had no idea we were uh, 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 now, but we brought in the right people. Yeah. Now we struggled through that a little bit, Sure, but you know, and we it, thought we were the right people and then they're wrong. Yeah. And then, and then, or it's the finance, like look at our insurance company. Yep. Like we're, we've lost a good chunk of money uh -huh. because, um, you know, and that's been, but it, but numbers wise, we're doing really well, Yeah, but we're still as a business, we're yep. not necessarily no. doing great. But so, uh, but we you know, have figured it out. The first three to five years in your business is like. Yeah. Know what we're doing. yeah. Well, it's just like this new acquisitions manager too. Um, you know, with our whole I buying side of things, like we do that too, like not only for good investments, but also it is a retention tool for our agents. And I don't hide that from anyone. All every agent that's involved with those on our team, like knows like, yeah, Adam and Stacey do that because it is a retention tool. Yeah. I want to, but I'm only going to do that with folks that I know are committed. Well, and they've proven and, themselves. And they've proven themselves. Yeah. They put in the work and that not only can they go out and effectively represent clients, but then they're going to work to facilitate a deal and make this into an investment for them. But, you know, I mean, look at the shift we're doing in that yeah. too. But it throws them off. It, it does. It throws them off. So actually we're having a meeting tomorrow here at our yeah. house to kind of go over, okay, guys, this is why we're doing this. Don't freak out. It's a good thing. We want to go from 50 to a hundred homes yeah. a year, for example.
Well, and think of this, not to stop you, but think of this. When an agent goes so deep on REI, their real estate suffers tremendously. Yeah. Really, and think about that. So like you might take that burden away from them going negative on the real estate side. Yeah. Yeah. And selling it to them because it's new. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. So that that's going to be, I'm excited for this new, the new acquisitions. Uh, I'm calling him an acquisitions manager. I'm excited for him to go deeper on that because he's already proven himself in my mind. I mean, he's already gotten one bot and, um, and he yep. just, he really just started. And, but you know, the agents are now like, well, are we going to get booted out? No, no, yeah. that's not going to happen. It's just, let's, let's get this thing up and running. Cause there are people out there that would much rather sell to an investor that's true. than put it on the market. That is, yep. that is something I've clearly learned over the last 10 years. Um, is they want that nice, clean, easy option. And so why not create a, a, a legit business all yeah, around it? Trustworthy. Correct. And then, and then bring our agents in for investment opportunities later, whether it's a rental or a, a fix and flip or whatever. A lot of them are rentals or fix and flips, but um, we don't wholesale, but yeah. um, we, we feel dirty about that. Yeah, it's so a bad, it's not, it's not like, it's not for us. It's a negative connotation. Yeah. And it's, it, it's get, you know, again, it's just like anything else. There's, it, there's a lot of fantastic ways to do it and you're doing it the right way. It's just sometimes, again, you'll find someone doing it wrong. Yeah. But, but again, the shake up there where we're like, where Stacy and I were like, let's do it. We, yeah. we didn't think much of it. All right, let's do it. Right, no. And then everyone else. I remember like, when he showed up in my office. Yeah. COVID, <laughs> because you were even like, what is, what's this all about? Why you, this Why wasn't, you this wasn't them? on the vision board or whatever, <laughs> but like, um, you know, but it did, it created a shake up because they're totally. like, well, are we getting replaced or are we no longer going to be a part of that? It's like, no guys, we just want to take this and help elevate it from this level to the next level. And this is what we feel is best for us to do that. And you guys will all come along, but we got to next few months is going to be seeing yeah. how this works. And is this really going to pan out the way we want it to? But totally. I mean, we're the one who's paying for it. So why not take the risk? Yeah. Um, but it's just change. Most people in general don't like change. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what it is. So it's like, when we have some new CRM or uh, we have a new lead source, we have a new uh, manager that comes on, like it all impacts their lives, right? Like we, even we have new admin join, like some of the agents are like, well, what, what's their background? What's their experience? What do they do? Are they easy to talk to? I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I interviewed them. Like, I promise they're going to fit in with our culture, right? Like I, a few agents were like, well, I don't, I don't know about these new admin. Like I haven't met them yet. I'm like, well, trust me, you're going to like, you'll like them. Yeah. But they get, in, it's change. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so shifting to babying the probably not the best thing to say. Yeah, baby, say ba baby, and the the top the top dogs. Just showing the top dogs love. Yeah, showing the top dogs love. <laughs> because they love. do deserve it. They really do. And yeah. again, there's that fine line between leave them alone, not, and then also where they're too left alone, and someone else is giving them something, right? Because everybody at the end of the day wants to feel special and want it and take care of. When we have an agent on our team, he will stop by my office two, three times a day and tell me how many calls he made and how many people he talked to. And then I have to give him a cookie. Yeah. Right. Like he needs it. Yeah. And, uh, on the way here, before I left, he asked me a couple of questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, but everybody needs that. Yeah. I would say to end out probably the one, a very exciting role though, the financial analysis we just hired, yes. Matt, that's that, going to be amazing. I, I'm excited for that. Not only help us on the back end with expenses, just, you know, running, financially in the in the right way which stacy takes on that whole role and that's like a big burden for her so not, not only freeing that up for her is going to be a huge saying plus yeah. it's good for my marriage <laughs> um well you've got like 50 checkbooks yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. 32 33 to be precise okay. um but also like well making smart decisions though too making smart decisions but what i really like is the really the forecasting part of yes. it. yes like, if we were if we were to get to x level how many agents do we need to have producing at what level? And then going to the agent level. Okay, you want to get to this level. Perfect. Here's this really good, clear forecast of what you need to do to get to this. Yep. He He's even already mapped out like, here's how many, you know, your average per agent productivity is doing this, right? Which we kind of already knew, but now it's visually always yeah. in front of us. And then also knowing like, this is like, like he made a comment, like generally once you hit uh, June 1st, you've done, if we're going off of previous years, you've done 60% of the team's business. Yeah. Yep. I did, I did, I never processed that. That's I'm crazy. Like, yeah, totally. 
And then, um, yeah, I'm excited about that. I think that's going to be a good, fun role to really like dive in. Cause you know me, I've always just shot from the hip and, well, and never really <laughs> dove into that. So it's going to be, it's well, gonna one, be fun of the, to... one of the things I found interesting too, was like, again, like I don't hide the fact that I have a 50% retention in real estate. I think it's, you know, 87% is the rule or the rule, excuse me, is kind of the market. 87% of the nation, uh, realtors that get in nine out of 10 essentially don't make it. Mars is about 50 one of the things he mentioned was if I get an agent to 14, I want to say I get that number down less than 10% of those agents fail. Really? So if I get ever, and I'm making this up really on the fly a little bit, but the way I looked at the initial report was if I get you to 14 and a rolling 12 months, you will be in the top five or top 10% of real estate earners in the city. So like, it's again, knowing some of those little facts where it's like, oh, wow, like, I have to get them to 14. It doesn't seem that hard, but it's like, okay, well, do you know how many you get to 14? It's yeah. like, oh, well, it just throws it in front of you. Yeah, but that, but that, and that, so that's, yeah, like knowing that stuff, but yeah. it also still means you have people that come on the team and you have people that leave the team. Absolutely. And so that's why focusing on the people that are putting in the work. Putting the work, have potential, yeah. and not wasting your time. And again, no offense, if you're going to show up to uh, an agent, team meeting and not participate, be on your phone, waste your time, don't even show up. Why would we put in the work if yeah. you don't want to come to the meetings? Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're definitely, I, I feel good about the shift that's happening yeah. right now. Like uh, some of it was presented like, oh, this is a bad thing. Okay. This is, this is correctable. And I feel really good. Oh, we've done it the last yeah. four years I've been here. So it's not like, again, this, this narrative has come up multiple times. Yeah. You know, this, and again, it's normally what happens is you have a, a seasoned agent that's disappointed in themselves. They haven't sold in two, three months, and they're upset that you haven't been holding their feet to the fire. Yes. That's what's happened. Yeah, you said that before, yeah, but that, it that's a very, all, it's a it very good point to re-say that. all the time with our agents. And again, it's if an agent wants to sell $15 million and they haven't sold in 60 days, they're not hitting $15 million normally. No. So we've got to stay on top of them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it, it is interesting how a lot of them end up coming back and saying, I'm, I'm really thankful you called me out. Yeah. 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 So it's just... So anyway, those are some yeah. of our struggles. Just a real talk. Again, it was kind of all over the place, but it's we got we got we had a lot. We had a lot converge all at yeah. the same time. Well, it all so, goes together. It's business, yeah. right? Like you got relationships. You've got humans trying to figure it out. You've got uh, conversations with the coach. How do we bring value? How do we hold the feet to the fire and then show them? Hey, by holding your feet to the fire, you're going to earn more money and pay off these whys that you want. Yeah. Well. Yep. Hundred um, percent. And then you got NAR. You got. You know, rates, you get seasonality. It's just ever the changing. The market's tanked. Yeah. So a lot of fun stuff. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.